Okay, so we should also introduce some new concepts in in incomplete brackets. I would want to briefly touch upon some ratios. So the first one that I would want to start off with is the gross profit margin. Okay, so the gross profit margin can be defined as gross profit upon sales into 100. So what this ratio shows is the percentage of sales that is being earned as your gross profit. So for example, if gross profit margin is 42%, that means that for every $1 of sale, 0.42% is your gross profit. And I can say the remainder 0.58% was spent on your cost of sales. All right, so the higher the margin, the better it would be for the firm. Now we would need the gross profit margin to, to find off some missing figures. For example, the cost of goods sold could be missing, purchases could be missing, or inventory could be missing. We, we will obviously use this ratio when we solve some other questions. Okay, besides the gross profit margin, we also need to know the gross profit markup. Now, gross profit markup was something that we briefly touched upon during absorption costing as well. Gross profit markup is defined as gr gross profit upon cost of sales. So if you guys recap, we used the gross profit markup to arrive at the selling price over here. So if you have calculated the cost of sales or the cost per unit, you can add a certain portion as your gross profit to arrive at the selling price. The gross profit markup again is used for pricing policies and it will also help us in solving for, for certain missing information. Okay, so now I would want to go through certain calculations which can possibly appear on the exam and we need to know how to solve these numbers. So let's start with the first case. So let me bring this over here. All right. So let's say if I give you sales to be 300,000 and I say the gross profit margin is 20%. Okay, now what do we understand by this? So I can say that your gross profit over here will be 20% of your sales, that's 60,000. So if my sales is 300,000 and my gross profit is 60,000, so we can arrive at a cost of sales that's 240,000. All right, so using the gross profit margin, we arrived at the gross profit and using that we can find our cost of sales. Now, if anything is, is missing from your cost of sales, be it inventory or purchases, but we do know the cost of sales figure now. Okay, let's solve another case now. All right, so now if I say, let's say, this time I'm giving you the cost of 200,000 that's already available and the gross profit markup that's 25%. Now we just recap that gross profit markup is gross profit as a percentage of your cost of sales. All right, so I've given you the gross profit markup. Now, how can we use this information? So I can say our gross profit will be 50,000 which is 25% of your cost of goods sold. Remember markup is a relationship of gross profit and cost of goods sold. So now if I know my cost of sales, I know my gross profit, the missing figure becomes your sales. That's 250,000. You guys can also add gross profit to your cost of sales to arrive at this figure, which is 250,000. Okay, now these were some straightforward calculations where the denominator was given on, and all we had to do was apply the ratio, whether it was margin or markup. But usually on exam, we might find cases where the given information is not available and you still have to use these ratios. So let's start with one case for that. So if I bring this over here. All right, now let's say I've given you guys sales, that's 600,000 and I've given you the gross profit markup. Okay, now what's the issue? Gross profit markup, as we just saw, was a percentage of gross profit on cost of sales. Now, cost of sales is not available. What we know is, we know our sales. Now, how can we use this ratio? Now, this equation is very important because we use this in absorption costing, we've used it in incomplete records, we will also use this in ratios. So let's say if I start off with this equation, let me solve this now. Okay, so I will still write this down that my sales minus cost of sales is gross profit. 
So what I know is my sales is 600,000. Cost of sales is missing. That's X. So I can say my gross profit will be 20% of this X. Why am I saying 20% of X? Because I know my markup. So, so whatever the cost of sales is, gross profit will be 20% of that X. All right, so you guys should think of it like this. If your, if your cost of sales is 100, your gross profit will be 20% of that 100, that's 20. So if your cost of sales is X, then according to markup, your gross profit should be 20% of X. So now I can say 600,000 minus X is 0.2 X. So if we take X on the other side, this should become 600,000 is 1.2 X. Right, so if we solve for X, X will be 500,000. All right, so now if I know my cost of sales, which is 500,000 and my sales is 600,000, we can find the missing figure that's gross profit, which is 100,000 over here. All right, so remember I've still used the same equation that sales minus cost of sales is equal to gross profit. Okay, now the last case. Let's take a look at that case as well. All right, now how should we solve this? Okay, now I've given you the cost of goods sold that's already available and you know your gross profit margin. Now again, you cannot directly use your margin. Gross profit margin was gross profit as a percentage of your sales. Now you do not know your sales, but you know your cost of goods sold. Now what should we do? Again, let me write down that equation. So I can say sales minus cost of sales should be gross profit. That's our basic equation coming from our income statement. Okay, next. Now I can say sales is X. We do not know our sales. I know my cost of sales. I've written that to be 400,000. Now I'll write my gross profit to be 50% of this X. Since sales is X and gross profit margin is 50%, I can say gross profit to be 50% of this X. So now we can solve this further. So I can say 0.5 X. So if, so if I take this 50% or 0.5 X to the other side, X minus 0.5 X should be 0.5 X. And that is equal to 400,000. You guys should be able to solve this now. Your, your sales is 800,000. All right, and you guys can think of it like this as well. If 50% is my gross profit margin, 50% should be cost of goods sold. So if out of $100 of sales, if we're left with 50, we've already spent 50. So that 400,000 was 50%, sales should be 800,000. So now sales minus cost of sales. We have our sales available, we have our cost of sales and our gross profit becomes 400,000. All right, so you all should be comfortable with using markup and margin, whether the given variable is available or whether it's not available. The most important equation again is to understand that income statement runs alongside this. Sales minus cost of sales should give you your gross profit. All right, so now let me solve a question in incomplete records where we will come across markup and margin and we will have to use this knowledge to apply and solve for missing information.